Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Our card today is featuring the brand new holiday catalog stamp set called Country Home. If you like that farmhouse and fall country look, this stamp set is going to appeal to you. In fact, the entire suite of products is going to appeal to you. I'm going to give you a lot of tips along the way for clear block stamping to create fun backgrounds for your cards. It's a simple card that packs a lot of punch regardless of the color palette you decide to use. If you are here visiting from YouTube, you'll be able to find the pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies for today's card down in the description bar below. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. Here's a close-up of the card we're going to be creating today. Isn't that a fun background and so easy? This designer series paper comes from a brand new package from the upcoming holiday catalog that debuts on September 5th. Now I can't open the pages and show you just yet, but I certainly can show you this beautiful paper. This is all part of the Country Lane Suite. And like most of the Stampin' Up! designer series papers, they are going to be double-sided. So you can see this side all has a theme for that country look. And on the opposite side, you're going to see some really beautiful patterns that can be used all year round with all types of cards. I've pulled out the greeting that says simply thankful for all the good things. And that's coming from that same suite of products. And the stamp set is called Country Home. If you fall in love with this as much as I have, I've got great news for you. It's going to be featured in my free card kit for September in what I call stamps in the mail. I want just the word thankful. So I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to use my basic black stamp and write marker and I'm using the thick end and I'm going to color in just the word thankful using the marker. Once you have the stamp inked, huff on it to re-moisten it with your breath and then stamp it on the designer series paper. Make sure you take your time and press out the entire design. I want to give you a tip too about your photopolymer stamps. You may notice when you first use them that the ink doesn't want to adhere very well and it doesn't want to stamp clean. Take your Versamark ink pad and ink up your stamp and stamp it off several times and then clean your stamp on your chamois or your stamp and scrub. That residual Versamark that's left on the photopolymer is completely safe, but what it allows it to do is prime the stamp so you get better coverage of the ink when you stamp with it the first time. On a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock, I'm going to use the Crumb Cake ink. I've mounted the stamp that has the cattail images on it. I want to create my background first. I'm actually going to use the back side of my clear block. This is where the term clear block stamping comes in. I'm going to ink it up on my stamp pad and mine is good and juicy and I know it's going to be too dark. So I'm going to stamp it off once, twice. You may even do a third time. That's completely up to you. And then I'm going to stamp that here in the middle of that cardstock. Your image is not going to be consistent. You're going to have light and dark areas. You may even have some mist areas. That is totally acceptable and it makes every card unique. So no two of these are going to look alike. You're simply going to clean your block on your chamois or on your stamp and scrub. Switching over to the Memento ink. I've got that same image and I'm going to ink it up. I'm going to stamp that image right in the center of that background. Lots of firm even pressure to make sure that you trace out the design. I wanted to add a little bit of color to those cattails, but I want to keep with the color theme of my card. So I've pulled out the Dark Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blends. You're going to find that the Stampin' Blends, both in the light or the dark shade, oftentimes mimic colors along the Stampin' Up! spectrums. Although I'm using crushed curry designer paper and cardstock for this card, I found that the Dark Daffodil Delight coordinated really well with that paper. I'm just going to color in my cattails just to get a little bit of color and emphasizing that fall image. And then nothing fancy here. I'm going to use a large blade pair of scissors and I'm going to come right around this. If you are very proficient with your stamp and trimmer, you can certainly use that. And I'm just going to mimic this, leaving a little bit of a white border all the way around. I've got an extra piece of Whisper White cardstock here and this is where I'm going to mount the designer series paper. I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to add adhesive to the back side and then I'm going to line up the designer series paper here at the bottom of the Whisper White cardstock. This piece 
is going to get adhesive as well. Do you see this here? I'm a little bit long on the designer series paper. I don't know if you can see that or not. So what I do to trim that up so that they're even is I take my paper snips and I work from the back side and I use this edge as a guide to cut off any excess that I may have. And then I'm going to go ahead and add adhesive in the four corners. And I've created a very small margin of color here with that crumb cake cardstock. The best part of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. Absolutely love that. So I'm going to flip that over and rub from the back just in case I've got ink on my hands. It won't transfer to the front of my project. Got a piece of the brand new braided linen trim. Really pretty. And I'm going to adhere the raw ends to the back side of this layer. By not going all the way around the card base, you're going to find that you're going to save at least four to five inches of ribbon every single time. I've got a piece of crushed curry cardstock and I'm going to fold that in half. And I like to use my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. And then this layer is going to get adhered to the card base. So once again, I'm going to add adhesive to the back side. I'm going to leave a margin of color all the way around. Again, rubbing from the back in case I have ink on my hands. I'm going to add my image here at the top and I'm going to use dimensionals for that. Do you see how the Stampin' Blend marker has bled through the cardstock? I prefer thick Whisper White cardstock when I'm using the Stampin' Blends in a much larger area. You're going to find the thicker cardstock is going to make your image look crisper and cleaner. And you're always going to want to make sure that you're using Memento ink so that the alcohol marker does not bleed with the black ink pad. That's going to get mounted here in the center of this upper panel. To finish off my card, I'm going to use one of the galvanized buttons that are all part of that same suite of products. And I'm going to use several glue dots to attach this to the card base. These buttons have an old-fashioned bent type of texture to them. And I'll adhere that here. And then I've cut myself another piece of that same trim. And I'm going to make a single loop bow. If you haven't seen me make this in my prior videos, you're going to make it very much like a bow, but you're going to pull the second loop all the way through. So we're going to start with our first loop here. We're going to come all the way around. And then here's that second loop. And typically stop here, but I'm going to pull it all the way through and then I'm going to pull tightly. We're going to be able to adjust this. So I'm going to slide the shorter one down, which is going to make my loop smaller, and then I'm going to pull on the other strand, which will make the loop tighter. I'm going to go back to a glue dot. I'm going to place that on the knot side. Anything that's exposed, I'm going to kind of roll to the back so it won't show. And I'm going to place that right over those buttonholes to make it look like we started it, but we certainly didn't go through the trouble. And then I'll give those ends a little bit of a haircut. So here we go. We've got the card that we created today. Here's the one I created before you join me. Do you see the difference? No two of those clear block stamping techniques are going to turn out the same. If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in receiving a complimentary copy of the holiday catalog or the annual catalog, I would be more than happy to send you one. Just leave me a comment below. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.